Gatwick Airport South Terminal. A flight from Puerto Plata in the Dominican Republic has just landed. Vigilant UK border agency officers, with the aid of highly trained sniffer dogs, are always on the lookout for drug smugglers from the Caribbean. And one passenger has triggered great interest. The man's nervous behavior has led to him being targeted. As he passes through the customs channels, Officer Michelle has been observing his body language. Thank you. She decides to intercept the passenger to ask him a few questions. Hello, sir. Have you got your passport on you, please? That's great. Have you got your ticket as well? Any ticket? And where do you live, sir? I live in Holland. In Holland? Yeah. So how long are you here for? How long are you here in England for? No, to be, I'm, I'm going to Holland. Right, so you've been to Porta Plata. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. And from here, you're going back to Holland, are you? Yeah. Where, when? When are you going back to Holland? Is it a flight from here or a flight from Heathrow? All right, have you got the ticket for that? Michelle keeps firing questions to find out if he's telling the truth. No cigarettes at all, nothing like that. OK, you also know it's illegal to bring any controlled drugs, weapons, explosives, etc., into the country, yeah? And these are your bags, are they? Did you pack your bags yourself? So you know what's inside them, do you? The man's travel plans just don't seem right, and Michelle is becoming increasingly suspicious. Just been out on a package holiday. Not so with friends or anything, went out on his own. He works in a factory in the Netherlands. He's flying on back today. They're all all right, aren't they? The X-ray shows no concealments of drugs, but a concerned Michelle still isn't happy. Sometimes we have a problem with people bringing drugs through on their bodies, OK? okay? So therefore, we want, just want to give you a rub down of your body, OK? But we won't do it here. We'll do it out the back, OK? As the man's led away, there's a feeling his story just doesn't add up. He only works in a factory in Holland, so it's obviously not really well paid. Um, he's picked to go to Porta Plata, which is an unusual place for someone to go. He's gone on his own and um, he's booked it all last minute. He's got all the extras you can possibly have. So it makes his holiday very expensive just for seven nights to, and to go on his own. It's, it's just bizarre, that's all. You just get feelings with some things and it just, just doesn't seem right. In a dramatic turn, the man is taken for a full body scan to find out if he's smuggling drugs inside his body. Do you want anyone else to be here? No? To be told you're here with us. You are entitled to read that if you wish. Obviously, Michelle is about to discover whether her instinct sorry. is correct. The, the other way, sorry. Yeah, if you stand like this, that way. Yeah? Yeah. Go, go up onto the top, onto travel, travel later. If you can breathe in as well, that will help us. Okay. Ready, breathing. As he holds his breath, the man's fate hangs in the balance. His day is about to get a lot worse. Packages, packages. He's stuffed with packages of drugs. OK, sir, from what we can see on the X-ray, looks like you have packages inside you. Time is 08.53 hours. I'm arresting you on suspicion of being involved in the importation of a controlled drug. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention one question, something that you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? OK, sir. He's got little packages which will probably be condoms full of cocaine. And now, literally, we've got to take him down, get him custodised, and then he needs to concentrate on getting those packages out um, because he doesn't realise, you know, if, if one of those burst or leaked, it could cost him his life. At Gatwick's North Terminal, a flight has just arrived from Dubai a country outside the European Union with widely available cheap cigarettes. Officers have been alerted by immigration to a man waiting at the luggage carousel. He collects the last of his cases and proceeds straight through the nothing to declare customs channel. Officer Paul stops the passenger to ask a few questions. Hiya. Can I cut word, please? Hi. Are you travelling on your own? Yeah. Do you have your passport with you, please? Yeah. It's just Dubai you've been to, is it? Yeah. What was the reason for your trip? I was just going to travel. What, to Dubai? Yeah, like, what's a nice place. What do you know about Dubai then? Okay. 
just hot. You haven't got a ticket. How much does a ticket cost you? Did you book your own ticket? Yeah. When did you book it? Friday. Right, how much does it cost you then? You, you didn't book it, did you? No. Right, who booked it? Um, I don't know. Alright, you travelling with somebody else? No. Where do you actually live? Uh, Newcastle. How are you getting back to Newcastle? Uh, coach. Coach? Having already exposed the lie, Paul is wary of anything the man says. The Green Channel. Do you understand what the Green Channel means? No. Right, have you been abroad before? Just to America. To? America. OK, when you go abroad, you're allowed to bring back certain goods. Yeah. Certain cigarettes, for instance. One bottle of spirit. How many have you got? And that one? How much do they cost you? Tabs are slang for cigarettes, and the man's confession doesn't impress. Have you ever dinners with customers before? No, not really. Apart from the wrong person. What happened? Um, I got deported. <laughs> Why was that? Sorry? I took some cat across. You took cat across? Yeah. Cat is an East African stimulant which is often chewed. Whilst legal in the UK, it's banned in America. How much money did you take out with you? Yes. 200 pounds, 200 pounds. Who paid for these? Then? Huh? Who paid for these? No. Who paid for them? Somalians. Somalians again? Uh, Paul becomes aware that the Somali who paid for the cigarettes is likely to be at the airport to pick them up. What's the name of the chap that you have to speak to on the phone? Um, well, what was the last name? Mohammed. Mohammed. Yeah. He's uh, Somalian. Okay. He's going to be. He's out there somewhere, and there's, there's fair chance there's another, there's another one with him because yeah. yeah, we never ever travel on the road, so he's going to be with. Yeah. He might have suitcases already. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cigarette smugglers often work in pairs, and officers realise there may be a chance of locating another smuggler as well as the recipient of the cigarettes. How much did you get paid for doing this? Two hundred pounds. Is that all? Yeah. Mind you, you get a holiday out of it. What? You get a holiday out of it. Yeah, what do you do? Well, I thought I had a car crash a couple of months ago, and I need to like raise three thousand pound excess reinsurance. So it's just. Uh, there you go. So you want benefit? Yeah. Back at the airport's south terminal, the Dutch drug smuggler who risked his life to bring packages of drugs into the UK is being taken into custody. He's made aware of his rights by the custody officer and for his own safety is told to get the packages out of his system as quickly as possible. Basically, when people have an internal concealment, um, to make sure we can see if they produce anything, we change them into a what we call white paper suit, and then we can see if there's anything happening, and un underneath they'll be um, completely naked. The man indicates he needs to go to the toilet, but this is no ordinary toilet trip, and this is no ordinary loo. So he's gone into the special toilet facility where if he starts producing packages, um, they then have to be cleaned up by the officer who's gone in with him and um, then they'll be bagged up as well. So just waiting for him to come out to see if he has actually produced any. Yeah, yeah. The gentleman said he needed the toilet and while I haven't counted them at the moment, it looks like he's produced around 20 packages and he's told the custody officer he's got 60 something. So obviously the quicker they're, they're out of his system, best chance he's got of survival, basically. The process of washing the packages is a very dirty job, but someone's got to do it. If one of the packages works as split, basically ends up in, with death within minutes, unfortunately. So that, that is why we try and get packages out of people as quickly as we possibly can, because the consequences of a first package are pretty serious. With the packages washed, Officer Paul must bag them up and weigh them to find out what quantity of drugs the man was carrying. Definitely big packages. <laughs> 344 grams of cocaine so far. If you take away a little bit for the packaging, etc., it's probably about 300 grams. One kilo nowadays is worth around 50,000 pounds. So he's, he's probably carrying about 50,000 pounds for drugs with him. 
the badges here. They're now seized from you, okay? And they will be yours. Property for free. The Dutchman pleaded guilty to smuggling cocaine and was sentenced to five and a half years in prison. Further inquiries resulted in another arrest. Back in Gatwick, Officer Paul has intercepted a surprisingly candid Geordie cigarette smuggler. Other officers attempt to track down the Somali recipient of the cigarettes, called Mohammed. They find another Geordie lad who also confesses to having smuggled cigarettes. He then tells the officers where they can find the elusive Mohammed. We've come out looking for a Somalian, obviously, but uh, my colleague stopped another lad who was a Geordie as well. He, in the end, he did cough to being met by Mohammed, who he said has just walked out of the car hall. So we've given chase and stopped the car here. It's got three cases full of cigarettes. It's a job well done by the officers, but after seizing the illegal cigarettes, Mohammed, the ringleader of the operation, is free to go. I'll tell you, right, I'll give you 200 pounds if you bring two suitcases of the towels back through. And... OK. Mm -hmm. It's been skint and losing my job. Yeah. I thought, well, me as well. Did you not think of the consequences? Not really, because I'm on the bones of my own. Uh, we got wife and kids at home. How many kids have we got? Three? OK. The other man from Newcastle is led back inside the airport to be reunited with his friend. In these circumstances, what we normally do is we just seize the cigarettes and the suitcases from them, and it stays on file. So if they get stopped again, then they'll get arrested and prosecuted for this offence and the next one. Um, so they're very lucky, because if they'd got caught a second time, with this amount of uh, cigarettes, you know, you're looking at a jail sentence. So from their point of view, they're quite lucky. So were you getting the flight back, or was it was the other chap driving you back to Newcastle? Well, well, we've got paid when we get out. You haven't been point, paid yet? No, we're probably not, no. With no money from the job, the lads now have another problem. I was relying on the money from the cig bringing the cigarettes through to get myself back home. Now I've got no money off cigarettes and no, no money to get myself home. As they attempt to make the long journey up north, the two lads can rue the fact that their 40,000 cigarettes with a street value of over £10,000 were intercepted. It's rather unlucky. In fact, my chap was particularly unlucky. He's only travelled abroad twice. Two trips abroad and twice he's been caught. He said he's not going to travel abroad again. <laughs> I don't blame him. At Bristol Airport, a flight has just landed from Malaga in Spain. Border agency officers working in immigration are alerted to a couple who've been acting suspiciously. A woman dressed in black and a man in a stripy jumper head to baggage reclaim. Officer Brandon decides to follow them to monitor their behavior. Two targets from Malaga. Um, we pull them on, just quick chat and check what they've got. You never know. Brandon moves into position, ready to intercept the couple as they pass through the customs channels. Hello, they're both customs. Just come through, please. You are together, yeah? How long have you both been away? Oh, yeah, how long? Two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. And where have you travelled whilst you've been away? Oh, I just from Spain, <coughs> just in the Artist Costa. Right. You've stayed in one place, or...? Yeah, I'm about all around holidays, which is normal. OK. Yeah. You ever been stopped by customs before? No, no, no. OK. Yeah. Bags packed for yourselves? Yes. Everything in the cases belong to yourselves? Also, where certain things aren't allowed to be brought into the UK, drugs, weapons, obscene material. Yeah. The man stares intently as his suitcase is searched. He then removes a mobile phone, which causes suspicion. No, it's not okay. Sure, yeah, sure. Just uh, part of the check, yeah? That's fine. He gets his phone back but seems a little agitated. 
Then a package is found, which might explain why. What's the name, mate? Eh? Uh, it's uh, sweets. Sweets. All sweets. For kids. Right, well, you'll open it up because I can't see what's in there. Go on. But Brandon's not falling for that. He opens the package to check the contents himself. Yeah, so sweets, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's cannabis, it is, isn't it? Herbal cannabis. You're not sure? You said you packed the case yourself? Yeah. All right. Because yeah, this time, all right, you're under arrest. All right? All right. Basically, you put you both under arrest, you're both traveling together, OK? On suspicion, important and illegal drug, control drug, all right? Now, you don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defense if you do not mention in question something you're too late to rely on in court, all right? Anything you do say, maybe get an evidence, do you understand? With both passengers under arrest, their cases continue to be searched. And it doesn't take long to find a number of identical packages. How much you got in total, mate? There's no respite for officers in Gatwick as another Caribbean flight arrives from Jamaica. Suspicion was raised by a German woman who claimed to have lost the key to the padlock on her suitcase. After forcing the case open, Officer Paul discovered that the woman was carrying a significant amount of cannabis. OK, so if you, if you just stand up for me, put your hands up, you put the sunglasses down. She's arrested straight away and put in handcuffs before being escorted to the airport's custody suite for further questioning. Presently, we have the 25-year-old German under arrest in the custody suite. So whilst um, she's getting a rights read to her, she's waiting for a solicitor to turn up. We, what we do is go through all the luggage. Um, this is obviously the, where the drugs were found initially. Um, and interestingly, she's in the top of the suitcase. She or whoever put the drugs in there has put a lot of foam around the outside of the case and around the edges of the case. With the suitcase stuffed to the brim, it's a huge amount of cannabis for one person to be carrying. These are just two or three kilo blocks of herbal cannabis. And very little else. The cannabis is bagged up. Paul needs to weigh the drugs to find out the severity of the woman's crime. So that's 18.15 kilos. Uh, the suitcase weighed 23 kilos, so it's nearly the whole suitcase was cannabis. Um, that'd be worth between 40 and 50,000 pounds. It's another excellent find by officers. For the German woman, it's been a highly risky gamble that hasn't paid off. A lot of them are single young females, and it doesn't surprise me anymore. We get, we've had single young females, we've had old men of 70, we've had couples traveling together. You know, it really, it's basically anybody that's short of money, anyone that's desperate for money will, will do it for a couple of thousand pounds or whatever else they've been promised. The woman later pleaded guilty to smuggling cannabis and was sentenced to nine months in prison. Back in Bristol, and with four packages of herbal cannabis found in a man's suitcase, the search now moves on to his wife. Almost immediately, Officer Brandon finds something hidden in the clothing. This time, he suspects it's cannabis resin. And as with the man's case, there's more than just one package. The drugs have been crudely concealed in clothing with little attempt to hide what's inside. As the last block is removed from the case, the couple know they've been caught red-handed. There's uh, six resin uh, cannabis and four packages of uh, herbal cannabis. Um, I'm not sure wait at the moment. I understand what you're saying, but I can't come on, mate. All right. 
The man should perhaps be more concerned about the illegal drugs found in his suitcase than having a cigarette. But tampering with the drug seizure will only get him in more trouble. As the couple are taken away for a full body search, officers are eager to find out how much they found. 2.68 kilos of herbal cannabis and 5.48 kilos of cannabis resin adds up to a haul worth over 20,000 pounds. It's a huge amount of illegal drugs removed from the street. It has been adopted by a higher level team, if you like, within the department, and they usually only take on the larger cases. So, uh, so we wait and see, but it is a substantial amount. There's no getting away from that. It's been an excellent day for Brandon. Less so for the couple, who will now be detained in custody.